So most of you know that I don't have the best track record when it comes to games I attend live watching the Bulls. The last time the Bulls won a game that I went to in person was in 2014. Yeah, it's been a while. Also doesn't help that I live in the Bay Area and the Warriors have kind of owned the Bulls more recently. But all of that aside, I really thought this was going to be a game the Bulls would take just based on how the Bulls showed up the other night against the Lakers at Staples, or I guess I should say Crypto.com. And I don't know, I just had a good feeling about this one. But we should know by now to never have a good feeling or have any kind of expectations when watching the Bulls this season. But what I will say, it's still an amazing feeling to be at the United Center. That atmosphere with all the other Bulls fans is unmatched. And I was very fortunate to have the Bulls give me a little behind the scenes tour of their office and some of the great work that they're doing. I also was able to chat with Adam Amin and Stacey King, which was great. Both of those guys are always so nice and cordial. So overall, the experience was amazing. But anyway, about this game. I mean, actually, if you guys watch CHGO, I was fortunate enough to come on to their show to join them for the post game show. Love Matt and Big Dave. Dudes are hilarious. I'll leave a link to that episode if you missed it. But as I mentioned on that one, rebounding, rebounding killed the Bulls in this one. I mean, it also didn't help that they couldn't hit their shots and turn the ball over at critical times, but the Bulls getting out rebounded 45 to 32, 13 offensive rebounds compared to the Bulls six and the Bulls allowing 30 second chance points. Yeah, you're not going to win many games that way. I mean, the good thing for the Bulls is going up against the team like the Lakers. The Bulls don't shoot threes. Well, the Lakers don't shoot threes either. Lakers only took 20 threes all game. Bulls actually took 33, but shot them at a horrible clip, shooting 27%. Patrick Beverly, 0 for 5, 0 points, was a minus 32. Yeah, it was funny and all, him hitting LeBron with the too small, but all that trash talking and trolling really came back to bite him in that terrible performance. And man, we really needed some of those threes that he put up to go down. Same with Patrick Williams, 0 for 5 from deep. One of the Bulls' few consistent outside shooters shooting over 41% from deep needed some of those threes to go down. I mean, the Bulls started off the game very slow, where it looked like they were going to get blown out early. When the Lakers went up 17 in the first quarter, I believe. Bulls closed the gap to end the quarter and then actually took the lead for a period of time in the second. Lakers got out a quick start in the third quarter, but the Bulls made some runs that would bring it down to single digits. And really, going into the fourth, despite the fact that the Lakers opened it up to 18 points a few times, the Bulls kept hanging around but they just could not hit some key shots down the stretch, specifically some of the threes from Pat. Also, free throw disparity. What the hell was that? That didn't help the Bulls. Lakers had 30 free throws compared to the Bulls' 13. An awful lot of contact on various plays where you had the refs choke on the whistle. But look, at the end of the day, this boiled down to the Bulls' inability to rebound the ball, giving up way too many second chance points, and not hitting their threes. Zach Levine only took two threes tonight. That's on top of the just two threes he took the other night against the Clippers. Now, as much as I love aggressive Zach and attacking the basket and finishing at the rim because he's done it so well since the All-Star break, his finishing ability is back to being elite like it once was, so I can live with Zach not just settling for long, deep threes, but we need to see him putting up more because he's actually a threat from three for the Bulls. He shoots threes at a high volume on a 38% clip. Like, that's one of the better three-point shooters in the NBA. You can't just have Zach taking four threes over the course of two games. Hell, DeMar has been putting up more threes than Zach. That can't happen. I mean, you look at the box score, which is weird because when you go to the game, you're not really following along the box score like you normally would if you were watching at home on TV. But looking at the box score, DeMar had a solid game, same with Zach. Vooch had an incredible game, scored the Bulls' first 13 points or whatever it was. I like that the Bulls just kept going into Vooch because the Lakers don't really have a solid five, although Anthony Davis is a great defender. Vucevic finished the game with 29 points, 12 rebounds, and 6 assists, 12 for 16 shooting. He actually shot the three ball well, 3 for 4, but was a minus 22. I mean, the starters really did get killed tonight as a whole. The bench was actually what brought the Bulls back into the game on multiple occasions, bringing in some energy. But a solid game for Vucevic overall. And then DeMar, 22 points on 9 for 15 shooting, 4 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 blocks, and 2 steals. A very all-around and complete game for him. But yeah, there were a lot of times where DeMar was taking shots that just were not good shots. Not the best timing on said shots. Reverting back to heavy iso ball rather than pushing the pace and keeping the ball moving. Rotating around the perimeter. All of that was out the window. Zach, 16 points on 8 for 14 shooting. Still crazy to me that the man did not have a single free throw with how much he was driving to the basket and creating contact. He did have five turnovers, though, and towards the end of the game, it just seemed like every pass he was making inside after driving to the hoop was a pass directly in the hands of a Laker player. I would really say the two biggest bright spots from this game were Kobe White and Ida Sumu, two of the few players who actually had plus ratings in this game. Kobe was one of the few players that could actually hit his threes. 
He also had nine assists on the game, continues to improve his overall passing. And then Io, 12 points was great at driving to the basket, creating contact, 12 points, five for nine shooting. I mean, really outside of those two guys and maybe Vucevic, there wasn't really a ton to be excited about. And it kind of keeps going back to what we've been talking about all season, that sense of urgency we need to see. The level of effort and energy was not there. Six games left in the season and you falter and have two bad games against the Clippers and Lakers. I mean, luckily for the Bulls, they have enough cushion between the Wizards and the Pacers, but you never know. They could just crumble to finish out the season and miss the plan. I still feel that that is very unlikely, but you never know with this Bulls team. At this rate, I think the eight seed is likely going to be out for them. They're going to finish with the 10 seed, which means they're either going to have to play the Raptors or the Hawks on the road and try to win two games to make it into the playoffs. Going to be tough. It's going to be tough. And I especially do not want to see the Bulls play the Raptors. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, guys. I know this post game video was a little late, got in late last night after doing the show on CHGO, and I've got to catch a flight back home today. Appreciate all of you for the love and support on the channel. It means a great deal to me. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.